Hi there. In this tutorial, we want to walk through the paper semi-supervised classification with graph convolution networks. And this paper is published in 2017. This is the first paper that introduced and formalized the convolution neural network for graph. So it is essential that we understand what is a graph. Uh, we know about the basics of a graph and some mathematics about it. I don't want to go to details, but just to have an insight about the, about the graph neural network, suppose that we have uh, different nodes and each node has edges. The graph can be directed or undirected. So if we suppose that this is a directed graph, so we're saying that these are connected together. And if I say this is node one, this is node two, and this is node three. So we have a graph with three nodes and two edges. And in problem that we can formalize them as a graph, we usually have some hidden information in a node. So we call them H, H, Y, or this in this example, this is H1, and this is H2, and this is H3. Each edge also has its own information like the weight of the edge. So we can have from number two to number one, maybe there is a weight like 0 0.2, there is a weight between node three and node two like one. It can also be undirected, but the whole structure of a graph can be defined like this. So when this edge that we defined here are called node representation, um, for example, you can suppose a problem of uh, predicting the citations. Uh, we have different papers like paper one, paper two, and paper three. And we know that paper two uh, cited paper one and paper three cited paper two. So suppose that we have a new paper. So we have a new paper here like paper number four. And we know the content of each paper, which call them like H. Uh, the representation of that note. So th this can be like some keywords of the paper, some informative features about the note. And we know that the H4 is somehow like related to H3. There is some similarity or stuff like that. So there is a possibility that H4 side H3. And because H3 side H2, there is a possibility maybe that H4 side H2. So this is one problem which is called H prediction or connection prediction. And uh, another thing that we can do is based on, based on their connection, suppose we have another category, we have another node here and they, they, they create a relation to each other, something like that. Uh, maybe these papers are related to, I don't know, computer science papers, but these are related to agriculture. Maybe there is one connection because they used some concept of the computer science in their paper, but the main keyword is different, like the H5, H6. Another problem can be like uh, the node classification. So we uh, classify these three as like related to agriculture, but classify these four as like computer science publications. So this is another example of uh, application in, in graph neural network. In other things like um, in biology, maybe we want, we want to find out the similarity of two different graphs or like in social media that, for example, some, some sort of complex Art architectures can be created. And we want to classify if I if I rotate this graph, and also the information, suppose that the information is also changed. So maybe I wanna I wanna classify graphs that have a similar shapes, uh, like similar connections, similar uh, nodes information, stuff like that. So in that case, if we have a new nodes like this, but I don't have any edge, but I have the information of hidden representation or node, represent, or node representations here and age weights here, or sometimes age also can have representation based on the graph. But I wanna classify these five nodes to find out 
are these following the same structure based on their um, node representation? So in direct discovery, sometimes graph neural network can be useful for finding out uh, which chemical compound can be used and which one is poisonous, which one is not poisonous. Like in AlphaFold, they use the graph neural network for uh, finding uh, the best way of folding proteins. And yeah, these are kinds of problem that can be defined in graph neural network. Another example can be like in the natural language processing. So we can create a graph neural network for knowledge graph. Like I have a text and I want to create connection between words. Like I know that the adjacency matrix, the matrix is the adjacency. So I can say this is an entity relation, something like that, or I can find grammars in a sentence or in code autocompletion, um, the graph now being used for predicting the next syntax that probably the developer can use while programming. And these kinds of problem are in graph neural network area. Um, for solving a graph neural network, there are different ways, like there are the graph convolution networks that we want to talk about it today. But there are some advanced, more advanced techniques like graph sage, uh, the graph isomorphism network, the simple graph networks, the gated graph sequential neural network, and graph attention network, message passing neural network. So all of these type of architectures and uh, formulation can be used for solving same problem. Like for node classification, we can use graph attention or we can use graph convolution and we can get different performance. But let's back to the paper. So this paper is presenting the simplest way of graph convolution neural network. There are more organized way now for convolution neural networking graphs, but this is the first paper. And you can find out some examples in, in like cross library that they use a prepay aggregate update mechanism that first it's prepared the uh, node representation. So it's just passed from a fit forward layer and after that, there is a step called aggregate. So we uh, get the information from neighbor nodes. The message of the neighbors of each nodes aggregated uh, using the permu permutation invariant operation. Like we can use sum, mean, max, stuff like that between the, like here between H5 and H3 for H4. So, and after that, we have an update. So we update this H4 based on the calculated uh, node representation or node neighbor representation. And we do this until uh, we update all node representation for one iteration. So this is some sort of graph convolution layer, but in the, in the main paper, it is so simpler. And let me go through that. In the main paper, it said that we can have the adjacency matrix here and the adjacency matrix can be multiplied by the node representation. So the X is X here is number of nodes. So node one, node two, and stuff like that. And we have uh, based on how many dimension, how many feature dimension that we have here. So it is like number of nodes by number of dimension that we have as features. And adjacency matrix is this, uh, and a square matrix that it is N by N. And for example, we say node one is connected to node two or not. Uh, if we multiply these two, we are creating N by D matrix. This is showing the effect of adjacency. It's like sort of aggregate that I explained that uh, we can apply different aggregation between the neighbor's nodes. In this example, we are using the sum. And after that, on, on this, we can have a activation function it can be like tangent hyperbolic or sigmoid function or stuff like that and we have a weight of the neural network so maybe i just put this sigma here so this is the first layer of convolution and we assign this to the x and we can do that do that again and again until we reach the goal and termination criteria another things that they are doing is normalizing this adjacency matrix and they are also adding an identity matrix they said a is 
the adjacency matrix of undirected graph and they added self connections to normalize them. They sum the number of connections here and create a D matrix, a diagonal matrix. The D uh, has two in diagonal, other elements is zero and something like that they continued. And after that, they use it, the Cholsky on D and the Cholsky on D is, is just because it is a diagonal, it's just this QRT of the diagonal elements. They did that for normalizing the A. And they talked about that normalization is important. They showed somewhere here that if you do not apply the normalization, they will get a little lower accuracy. This A is the original adjacency matrix without self-connection, but this is uh, the A plus identity matrix, and now it is normalized. So they showed that this can improve the performance. So this is the whole process of applying convolution graph neural network. And as you see that there are steps like updates from getting updates from neighbors and also uh, updating the nodes, which all is done in this matrix multiplication. But the next versions of graph convolution on our network, they uh, design specific updates like gated recurrent unit, or they use the recurrent neural network concept for message passing between nodes. But we wanna implement these simple things and hope after implementing that, you are able to implement some different type of updates. So let's go to the code. So I have created an empty project called Node Classification Graph Convolution on Neural Network. And here I'm creating a class called like GCNN. And I wanna create class graph convolution. Like before we wanna use NN module. So we need to define node numbers. And also we need to define dimension of the node representation. So I can say node rep representation dimension. I, I need these two. So we can create a parameter. We say from torch and parameters parameter. And in parameter, we want to create a W matrix that we had in formula. And I said torch that float tensor. And we need to pass a size. So as I said, size is number of nodes and node representation. We can also add biases. We can say the bias is true or false. So if we want to have biases, so we can, we can say if bias is true, we want to create another parameters that we call them B, maybe self.w and self.b. For each node representation, we will have a bias. Now we'll go to the forward layer. We get matrix X and we get the matrix adjacency. So I don't want to use uppercase here. So here, as I said before, so we get an input, which can be the node representation. And we need to multiply this by the weight. And torch has a command for multiplication. This x and self w should be multiplied together. And the adjacency matrix is a sparse matrix. And the torch has something called a sparse multiplication. And defining a sparse makes the um, a sparse a storage format in different formats that usually I use much less memory and it's more computational efficient. We want to apply this between between the A here and the output of this. I call this like a support. I will multiply these two. I can say if the bias is defined, so I need to say self that bias is equal to bias. And here I can say if bias is defined, so I will, this is our output. I will add the bias and that's it. I'm gonna return out. So we have a graph convolution and based on this graph convolution, now we wanna create our main class. I can say class 
Not classification, GCNN, something like that. And what we need here is we instantiate from graph convolution. So I say self that conv one. Suppose we want to create a two layer graph convolution. So we need to pass number of nodes and also we need to pass node representation dimension. So we pass these two to the network. And now we can create another graph convolution. I call it layer two, conv two. Now the things that we need here is number of classes. So how many class that we want. We can also create a drop out. So we can say self dot drop out. And let's name them graph conf because it's different than conf. And when we want to get input, we get X and we get the adjacency matrix. Let's make this adjacency to make it, I think, a little cleaner. And the first thing we want to apply convolution on X and adjacency. So we can import import torch and and that functional as f and here we want to do like relu function so you remember the formula that we had the sigmoid after applying one layer which is h i get this so i can do this another time difference here is i want to have a drop out because we have a drop out here we can say f dot drop out and the drop out get the input it get how much and we'd say it is training or it is not so because if it is training we apply the drop out but in the test we do not so we need to pass x and how much drop out drop out value we want to pass so we say self and if it is training we don't want to so there is a training inside the module. So if it is training a module, it's uh, it's needed that this is training and we don't need to pass any other value. Finally, we need a linear layer for how many number of classes that we want. But one of the things that we can do is, so the W matrix that we create and be, be applying it here can change the dimension of the node representation. So it's better to have node representation here and we say we want to have number of classes here. Or we can have both node representation here and we have a linear layer after that. Both can be done. But to have more cleaner, maybe instead of node representation, we can say uh, node numbers and here is output numbers. And here we say we want to create based on output numbers. And here we say node number of classes. So in that case, the last layer will create an output with size n class. And in that case, the simple thing is we apply a softmax or uh, to make it better, we apply a log softmax last layer and in dimension one. And of course, I didn't pass biases, so I can't say the bias is true or false. We just pass the bias here. So that's it. Now let's to create a unit test for this. Like previously that we create a unit test. So I can come here, create a folder called tests. So this is our test folder. What I want to test is care of convolution on network. I want to instantiate node classification GCNN. Okay. And as I said, we need to pass number of nodes Suppose that we have five nodes and each, each one has 10 representation. We want to have two classes and the report is true and other is true. Okay. Okay. And we need to create some parameters here. So the parameters, so I can say torch that and end that parameter. And here I say torch that rand. So the size that we want here, we want to create nodes representation, which is in size of node numbers and node representation dimension. I said 10, okay. This is first variable and we need the adjacency matrix. So for creating adjacency matrix, uh, a good way is to 
instead of creating the matrix, we can, because it is sparse, we can create a matrix with the connections. And we say the tor to create a sparse matrix for us. For that, I can say connections is, is like torch.tensor. It is a tensor. And this is trying the first nodes like from, I can say, let's give you an example. So you can create these two vectors. We can say node zero is connected to like node one. And again, node zero is connected to like node two and node one is connected to node three. So if you create something like this, it can be any shape. So we can say torch that is parse that fellow tensor. So it get these adjacency and connections that we have. We wanna create a, a ones matrix with size number of nodes, torch that size. And this is number of nodes and number of nodes. And I can say convert this to dense. I can call this self adjacency. Just for showing you that how this is work, I can put a debug point here. If I print self that adjacency, just to show you how this look like. We said that number zero is connected to one and connected to two. So you can see here. And I said like number one is connected to three. This is the adjacency matrix that we have created, but what we want to do is, like it said in the paper, so we need to normalize it. So we need a normalized adjacency matrix. For normalizing that, we need to find the D, and D is a diagonal matrix, but we need to sum on dimension one. We need to create a diagonal matrix, so we can say torch.diag, and we get the tensor. So we have this D, so this is our D, but I don't want a D, I want to have D square. If you, if you remember the formula, if you see the paper, we need the inverse of the square T of D. Here, the torch ones is just one by number of items that I put here, because my number of item is now six. Uh, better to say, connection that shape one, which is six, because I have two rows and six columns. And in that case, I'm creating the adjacency matrix. If I copy that here, so I can see the adjacency matrix here and each of them has connection. So we're supposing that every node has a connection. So we can say this is the inverse and this is a normalization weight that we wanna apply. And based on the paper, what we wanna do is do D inverse multiply by self adjacency and again multiply by D inverse. This would be the self adjacency normalized. So I can say this is normalized self adjacency. So the other things that we forgot is adding an I to the inverse. So before adding sum, we need to say self that adjacency is equal to self that adjacency plus. So we have torch that I and torch that I get the size, number of nodes and number of nodes, okay? So if I do that, I have this as the adjacency. So I need to have this before applying the sum. So you can have adjacency, we can say this is adjacency plus i. So for testing the um, graph neural network, we have self dot node graph neural network, and we need to pass. We can use forward function. I pass node representation and I pass normalized adjacency, and I will get the output. So it will go through two layers and let's see if there is a problem in the code or everything is fine. We think problem mat one and mat two shape cannot be multiplied. One is five by 10 and another five by 10. So we did something wrong here because um, the, if we have something like this, we had A and E and after that we had DW and 
it doesn't matter that we multiply x and w first. So uh, the size of x is the number of nodes and the number of features that we have. And number of w is number of features and number of hidden hidden vectors, hidden, hidden features or latent vectors uh, or latent features here. So we should create different things for them. So that's why I create a hidden dimension. This is H and we have feature dimension. And when we wanna create uh, node classification, we need, to have, we need to have feature dimension and hidden dimension because we don't care about what is the size of the nodes. Uh, every size can come here and apply it, uh, to the A and N. One of the one of the problem that we made is here. So we should create feature dimension, hidden dimension here. And for node classification, we should say we have graph convolution neural network that has feature num and node representation dimension, which is a hidden dimension. The first input the first dimension of the w should be node representation and the last can be in class or it can be uh, continued like another layer so we have node representation node representation and the next node representation and number of classes so this would be okay now and for, for this purpose we have to change the what else so at this adjacency matrix is five by five so we have normalized adjacency matrix, which is five by five, and we have node representation now, which is five by seven, because I said the feature dimension, the first input of the network is uh, five by seven, okay? And in that case, we are creating the output, and the output is uh, five by two, because I'm saying the last layer, I want two outputs, and we can apply the max on dimension one to get the number of classes. So everything now it's working and we don't have any other issue. Now we can go and using the citation data sets, we can train a model and see how is the performance. So I have created a file demo that IP Y and B for Jupyter Notebook. And uh, I also have the Quora data set, which is a uh, famous citation data set. It has uh, different papers. It has some word attributes and class labels. And um, you can see, we can define the data in a graph phase. So there are some code base in the internet that we can use for loading the data. So I, I just copy and paste that and I will uh, explain you what's going on here. So we have a load data function and I'm passing the load data function on the data set pass. And after that, we have generate from text. So we load the data. If you see the data, this is Quora.content and Quora.sites. And Quora.site is something like this. It say that number 35 is connected to which other numbers. So it has like node number 35 is connected to this, node number 35 is connected to that. So this is exactly same as what we defined in our tensor data. So it's just reading that. And in the content, we have something, um, the feature representation of each node. So we have these nodes and we have the feature representation. And this can be like different, different type of keyboards. So is it, is this node have that keyboards or not? Is this word, so it means that like, does this have the keywords of number two or not, number three or not? So creating some matrix like that. And also it has the label. So it's showing the, this is the neural network. This is a rule learning class of the paper. So this is the whole data. And what we want to do is load the data from the content, which has index feature labels. And we do the sparse uh, using the SciPy here. Uh, for last column, which was the uh, label, we do one hot encoding. And for one hot encoding, we have this. So this is just an example of one hot encoding. We know that this is the node number. So we create index. This is number of nodes. And we create a map between nodes. Um, we call them edges 
So the edge is coming from the sides, as I showed you, the sides is these nodes is citing these nodes. And we say it said it is unordered after that, order them. And after that, we use the CUO matrix for creating a sparse adjacent symmetry. This is uh, similar to what we have done for our unit test. And there is, there is a difference here that they want to do uh, symmetric adjacent symmetrics that makes sense because if we suppose that our adjacent symmetric is directed, and also in the paper they say it shouldn't be directed matrix. So as, as we see in our unit tests, one of the rows was completely zero. That shouldn't happen. And we should have a symmetric adjacent symmetrics. So they just make sure that the adjacent symmetrics is symmetric. And after that, they normalize their features and they normalize the adjacent symmetrics. There is a normalization function. And it is exactly the same what paper is doing. So they take an inverse using this and replace all infinity with zero and calculate the diagonal and uh, calculate the multiplication. So that's it. And after that, they will create the tensors for us. So we have adjacent symmetrix, features, labels, and everything same. What you want to do on this is to train a model that do the node classification. So if you have a node, we want to say which class probably is based on the connection with others. So we have a new papers. We know these papers cited others. And based on what the paper cited, we can decide that this paper, the content of paper should be something like that. Similar to the unit test that we have created. So we want to have node classification. And for having node classification, we have to import from GCNN that we had. So this is number of features that we have. So I can say features dimension is this and hidden dimension. How many hidden dimension you want to pass? This is something I can define it. What, whatever I, I feel is okay, like you can say 256. And number of classes. So we have labels, so it is six. So I can say number of classes should be like this. This is our node classification graph convolution on our network. And what we want to do is creating a main loop and train the model. So we can say number of epochs. So epochs is like 10. Let's create it in the next cell. So we say epochs and for epoch in epochs in range epochs. The first thing we want to say is we want to do the model in train. We should define optimizer. So I want to, I want to use the optimizer um, Adam here. And we have model, maybe I call it model, it's better. So I have the model and model.parameter. And we say optimizer zero grad, and we apply the feature and adjacent, adjacency metrics to the model and get the output. We also use the functional of the PyTorch for calculating the loss because we applied um, log softmax, we can do. Um, likelihood, negative likelihood. So for negative likelihood, I from F, I can use N L loss. So I can say F dot N L loss. I can say this is our output. And what is our target is I need the labels. And this will be our loss. And I can say loss dot backward. So loss dot backward. And after that, we can do the optimizer one step at a time. Also like to see the accuracy. And as, as you can see, the terrain and test is done here. So they have index of a terrain and index of a test. So we can use those indexes for training and tests. So here I can say terrain feature is features with index train and all features and train labels, which is labels, but in index of train. Similarly, we can use it for test. And we have validation, we have test. So we can use validation just for validation. So we have validation and here we can say val. We have val. And here we wanna put it to the model. 
And about the adjacency matrix, adjacency matrix, we need also train features, train adjacency matrix. And for adjacency matrix, we need to pass all adjacencies, not something to be trained and test. And here for output, we need the label of the train. I like to have an accuracy definition, so I can say def define accuracy. And accuracy, I can get the output and get the label. I can say output, we should get the max in dimension one and get the second one. I want to set type as type label. And we want to see how many corrects we can say equal two labels. And we can get the double of it. And after that, we can sum it. I'm just doing everything in one line. It's not good, but it's not readable, but it's just something that I want to. And finally, if I divided this by number of label, we can say this is our accuracy. And here after calculating the loss, I can say calculate accuracy tool and on train labels and get the accuracy and maybe print the accuracy. After that, so maybe it's better to have a model train here. It means that they drop out, everything should work. And and when we reach here, we, we say model.eval, yeah, and we do the validation. For validation, we apply the validation features to the model with adjacency matrix, get the output, calculate the accuracy. So here I can say training validation. Let's just run it to see if everything is fine or not. So it said, Argument three, expected dimension zero sizing got 140. So for adjacency matrix, we have an issue that if we have removed some indexed from the feature, so it means that in adjacency, we don't have any adjacency in, in those rows. So if I wanna have adjacency matrix from the index train in rows and in columns, so we cannot do something like that. This is somehow sparse, and this could be because the operation doesn't exist. So in that case, we don't need to create a train and test here. And for labels, we can, we can keep them. And we pass the whole features to the model. And when we wanna calculate this, we say, calculate the output of the index train and back this loss. And for this one, again, calculate the loss of the validation. Okay, let's do this now. And set out is not defined. Oh, this is output, so it should be output. Let's do it again. Turning epoch zero, the first one is calculated, but it's reached to this line and loss output index value. Oh, and this is train label, which is not right, should be validation label. And we do again, so it seems that loss is not changing. And again, we have to, for calculating accuracy, we have to just pass the train index here and validation index here. So I changed this to line. So we have label, not labels. That's my bad. Let's run it again. So as you can see that we are not increasing the accuracy and making loss better. So another mistake that we did is we set this to true, but this was the, how much dropout that we want to put. So I set it to two, 0 0.2 as a default. So we have dropout here. Let's run the code again. So I have to restart everything. I don't have auto loader on the Jupiter, so I can import that, but it's not too big to run it again. So I will initialize the model again, calculate the accuracy and run. So you'll see that the accuracy is not improving. So let's figure it out. So I have noticed that uh, the problem is that when we define parameters in a, in a tensor, so we need to reset it uh, using like a uniform distribution. And that's why I uh, just found out that we should apply a reset parameter every time that we create a graph convolution. 
and we create a standard deviation and this is one divided by the, the SQRT of the size that we want. And based on that, we create a uniform distribution. So we say self.w.data uniform distribution between these the standard deviation. So, and if we have bias, so we have to do it again. So in that way, the weight that we have created will not saturate the layers. And every time the value that assigned to each weight is too small, that's why the network can be trained. So if I reset everything and I run, I will see that I have this loss, which is reducing and I'm getting like 73% accuracy on validation. And I can increase the number of training like to 30 or more. Let's, let's set it to 100 to see. So it is 82. So we, we got 82% on validation set and 100% on train set. We can like do some different things like adding different layers, stuff like that. But uh, let's see one other things on this paper. So the performance of the state of the art method on test set, it's like 97% AUC using a method called distribution-based aggregation for relational learning. And some other method like relational ensemble classification could get 81% on test set. So let's just apply this on a test set too and see how it is. So after we train everything, we just wanna do this, but this time on test set. This is so simple to do. So I set test set. We don't have any epoch. So I say, what is the accuracy? And we have index of test. So we have index of test, index of text, and here for labels, we can define labels dot index of test. And this is test label. So we have test label here and test label. So if I do something like that, I will get 78% accuracy, which is not bad. And as I said, the state of the art, like 79%, 85%, stuff like that. So now we could get train a model to node classification. So if you have a node with those features, we can predict that which category this node belongs to. I will push this code to the GitHub and appreciate of your comment, your subscription, sharing this video in your community help me to create more content and inspire me to create more content. Thank you. Bye.